Hello guys, Nathan here with a Blender Quick Tip. Today we're going to be looking at Baking Ambient Occlusion, or as it is often referred to, simply AO. Uh, ambient Occlusion is basically just a... I shouldn't call it simple because I'm sure it's not, but um, the computer basically calculates how much light would hit each face and then shades it based on that and you get an output of all your different shade levels. So let me explain. We have this nice little dragon I've modeled here for a my test mod. It's pretty much just a simple column topper. It's already UV unmapped. Here is the, I'm sure, horrible, horrible, horrible geometry, especially if I am seeing this right. And I have a face that is intersecting itself. I don't even know how I made that happen. And like, what is this? This is horrible mesh. Kids do not make mesh like that. I don't even know how that is humanly possible. Kids, if you walk away from this with anything, don't do horrible unmapping like I have here. This is a nightmare. Like, I don't even know how you would fix this. This face needs to be outside of that face. That face feels like it should be. Oh, maybe that's how it should be. I really have no idea. All I know is this is horrible, horrible, horrible UV unmapping. But we're not dealing about UV mapping right now, though you do have to UV unmap your mesh first before you can do an AO bake. So, let us create a new a new texture. Uh, we'll use black, that's fine. 1024 by 1024 is fine. Whoops. Let us go to the default view here. And in the um, the render tab here, you want to scroll down near the bottom where it says bake. And you have a bake mode with all these cool different options. We are just going to do the ambient occlusion. And we will hit bake. And up here you can see the progress bar running across. Now depending on the density, or maybe uh, complexity is probably a better word, of your mesh, the size of your maps... It's going to take a different amount of time, how strong your computer is, what your computer's all doing at the moment. All these things, whoops, affect how long it'll take. Here is the completed UV map. Why am I calling this a UV map? The completed AO map. You'll notice it did a slight border going outside of the faces here. That is configurable. I suppose I should show you that. You have a margin here, which will basically say how far out it goes. So if you set it to zero, it'll be exactly to the lines of your UV map. Probably not going to want to leave it at that. You're going to want it at least at one or two. You can't even go higher. It won't hurt anything. Until you get to the point where your UV islands are too close and the margin actually starts overlapping into other areas. Which fortunately, I do not have anywhere in this mesh. So that is a good thing. Now, you can preview what it looks like in Blender by going to, well, Rendered View does it, but I didn't actually want to do it that way. Texture View, here we go. You can see that the spot behind his front leg, the spot kind of where his rear leg awkwardly juts out of his body, like super horrible topology. The guy that made this was a complete amateur. Oh, that's right, I did it. Inside of his mouth is dark. So spots where there should be shadows, they're shadows. This is great for doing game art where you're not going to have a render engine actually dynamically calculating shadows. Um, I'm seeing a problem here on his foot. That could potentially be my bad. Or it could be because I did a horrible job UV unmapping things. Which turns out to be the case. Because I am a genius like that. Alright, well, let's not dwell on the horrible UV mesh too much. Here's a UV map. With our AO bake on it. Let's do something with it. So let's export this image. Um, and let me just save this to desktop. And we are going to call it... Uh, how about... AO bake just for simplicity's sake. And then we actually want to 
export the UV face layout as well. And we'll just call this UV layout. Again, for simplicity's sake, we will save to desktop and I will export. Drop this one in. So we have our ambient occlusion map and we have our UV layout. What you probably want to do is go ahead and create a new layer on top of all of this. The ale bake above the. Never mind. You don't have to use GIMP. Let me put that out there right away. Any basic photo manipulating program that has layer support will work just fine. It does not have to be GIMP. Um, MS Paint probably will not work solely because last I knew they don't have layering. Um, that could have been added. I have not used Paint in a very long time and I would hope to keep it that way because as I recall, MS Paint was complete and utter garbage. So basically, you just paint hopefully something that looks a little better than what I just painted here onto your map. Then you do a layer effect. And you can do different ones. You can do burn, which probably gives you too strong of an effect. Adjusting the opacity, however, on this adjusts the opacity of everything. So you don't want to do that. Adjusting the opacity here kind of just changes how much green value you, green value you have going on. So burn's probably not one you're really going to want to use. I usually do. There we go. So you have nothing, and you can increase your value in until you pretty much just get it right where you want it. And then, of course, you would export this. Export as and my export dialog showed up on the second screen so you can't see it but it's okay and then we would just open I called it layout one here it's gonna be a horrible looking image because I just have his tail painted and this little bit of his foot but you'll see and of course it's really in a bad spot because you don't really see too much where there's the different lighting going on. But you can kind of tell the inside of his tail here is darker than the outside. Just a real simple way to add a little more dimension to the models and give them a little more believability instead of them being just something like... Well, of course it would show up black. I don't want it showing black. Instead of it being something like something like this, where it's just a solid color. Of course, white really isn't a good color to demonstrate with. But instead of just being a solid color where you really can't tell what's what, and it just looks super flat, it gives it a little bit more depth and dimension to it. it makes it kind of pop a little bit more and adds a little, little bit of realism to it. So that wraps us up, guys. Hopefully it helped somebody out. As always, links in the description for all sorts of cool stuff. Check out my website. And, uh, yeah, read blog posts and learn about mind test mods and modding and all sorts of fun stuff. I will catch you guys later.